Hello. For the purpose of our final reflections in trash, we're going to look at the importance of using transitions to help the fluency of our writing. We've talked about transitions before in terms of using them within paragraphs to transition from one idea to another. Uh, but we've not talked about the importance of using transitions between paragraphs to join our paragraphs together, so to create some cohesion from one paragraph to the next. So just in quick review, if we look through our essay, we can find some transitions within the paragraphs. In the first paragraph, I can see the word although. In paragraph two, we have later in the chapter, okay, which kind of tells us that there's some skipping of time. All of these actions, which is talking, kind of referring back to the entire paragraph and all of the things that were just mentioned. In addition, tells us that we're adding another idea to the ones that we've already mentioned. In the third paragraph, <clears throat> We have, let me see here, he continues, which tells us, again, we're adding some more in there. At the beginning of the paragraph, we have the word, however, kind of comparing ideas or telling us that there's an exception to that rule. Body paragraph three, we did eliminate because of the fact that there was some information in there that might be a little too revealing. <clears throat> The last paragraph we have by the end of the novel, which tells us where we are uh, in terms of what we're writing in the paragraph. So you'll see that while we don't have a ton of transitions, we do have some transitions in here peppered throughout that will help the fluency of our writing. Again, you don't want to overdo it because just like pepper on mashed potatoes, if you use too much, you ruin it. Uh, we don't want to use too many transitions in our writing, otherwise we will end up ruining that. So just a quick review, uh, you should have a paper in your writing notebook that lists a whole bunch of transitions that you could potentially be pulling from. Try not to use the same transition word in a paragraph multiple times. Again, otherwise it just becomes overdone. The next thing we're going to look at, and this is truly the new piece for today, is how we use transitions between paragraphs to create, create some cohesion between them. So those transitions typically come at the beginning of our paragraphs. <clears throat> We won't have one in our intro paragraph because we don't have it to connect to anything, too. However, I do want to point out in the introductory paragraph that thesis statement that we worked on. So we talked before that it's the last sentence in that paragraph. So there is our thesis. So in our paper, we're going to be talking about how Father Juilliard is caring, but also how he's perceptive. But then by the end of the novel, how he becomes a little too naive uh, and trusting, or how being caring and perceptive aren't the only things that he uh, exhibits. He's also naive and trusting. So those are kind of the three things that we're going to talk about in our paragraphs. This will be body paragraph one, body paragraph two, and then this will be body paragraph three. So I want you to keep that in mind as we start looking at the transitions between paragraphs. Because if we look at body paragraph one here, and we look at our topic sentence, it says, readers recognize Father Juilliard's caring nature as soon as they meet him in part two and see many examples of this throughout parts two and three. So if you notice in here, we mentioned that word caring again, which goes back and parallels the fact that we said in our thesis that that was the first thing that we were going to be talking about. So because that's the first thing in our thesis, that's what our first body paragraph should be on, and that tells us what this entire paragraph is going to be about. So that kind of connects this paragraph with our thesis statement, which is ultimately what we want. Now, if we look at body paragraph two, back here, Here's our topic sentence for body paragraph two. It says, not only is Father Juilliard caring, but he is also perceptive. Well, I went a little far there. So that's my topic sentence for this. And if you notice, I mentioned caring again, which goes back to reference the paragraph that we just wrote or read, depending on if you're the writer or the reader. This entire paragraph up here was about being caring. So we're referencing that we just talked about that, but then we're also introducing a new idea which is the fact that Father Juilliard is perceptive. 
So we have caring from body paragraph one, and this paragraph's going to be about him being perceptive. So if we look back at our thesis statement, you'll notice caring is our first thing we're gonna talk about, perceptive is our second. So if you're following along with me, then you should realize that body paragraph three is then gonna talk about him being a little too naive. So let's double check that. <clears throat> body paragraph three we did omit, but I did put the topic sentence in here just so we could kind of take a look at it. So here it is. Even though Father Juilliard is caring and perceptive, he is easily manipulated by the boys, making him naive. So again, if we dig a little deeper in here, we mentioned caring again. That was from body paragraph one. We mentioned him being perceptive, which was the paragraph we just wrote or read right up top here. And now we mentioned the, the new idea about the fact that he is naive, which is going to be that third body paragraph. And again, if we look back at our thesis, it should match. We should have caring, perceptive, naive. So let's take a look. Here's our thesis. We have caring, perceptive, and naive. So our body paragraphs should parallel the ideas that we come up with in our thesis statement, and they should be in the same order, but they should also kind of summarize what we've already talked about. So when you start a new body paragraph, it should kind of summarize what you talked about uh, in the previous paragraphs. You don't have to go into a lot of detail, but just dropping that character trait or that small idea that you introduced in the paragraph before will help create some cohesion oops, and some uh, fluency in your writing. And then if we look at our last body paragraph, this is our, not body paragraph, our conclusion, you'll see here Okay, we have that transition there. By the end, Father Juilliard, the compassionate and perceptive father figure in trash, loses his naive outlook on life after his adventure with the three garbage boy or dump boys. So again, we're reviewing all three of the things that we've talked about. Compassion, which is just a good synonym for caring. Perceptive, and then we have naive again. So you can kind of see that same, those same ideas flowing throughout the entire piece to create some cohesion. That's what I'd like for you to try and do in your body paragraphs and, and your, in, your conclusion is to see if you can connect those paragraphs in your topic sentence. So go back and look at all of your topic sentences for your three body paragraphs and make sure that you have them kind of connected. They're referring to the idea or the topic that came up before uh, in the previous paragraph. Okay, if you have any questions, please make sure you see me. Otherwise, see if you can start to create some transitions between your paragraphs, not just within your paragraphs, although I do want a good combination of both.